live from Television Hill. This is WJZ News at 6.30. Tonight, less than 1,500 people are in a Maryland hospital with the coronavirus. It's the lowest level in three weeks. Intensive care cases continue to drop. Good evening, I'm Rachel Cardin. Statewide, there are now nearly 39,000 confirmed cases. It's the first weekend for the governor's stage one in the road to recovery. WJZ is live tonight. Annie Rose Ramos shows us that some people say they don't feel reopening was the right move. Annie Rose? Rachel, officials in Baltimore City and here in the county say they're just not ready to completely reopen. It's why these restaurants you see here are still shut down, only offering carry out services as police over the weekend had to reinforce and remind people that that stay at home order is still in effect. Maryland reaches nearly 39,000 cases of COVID and a third straight week of hospitalizations going down, dropping by 40 patients Sunday. It's the main statistic Governor Larry Hogan used to justify lifting a statewide stay at home order Friday. But several jurisdictions like Howard County and Baltimore City are remaining under a stay at home order. We are making progress, but we are not yet where we need to be to safely reopen. Officials citing their number of cases and lack of testing as enough reasons to remain closed. And in Baltimore County, a modified reopening where churches still cannot hold indoor services. If Walmart's open, it's time for the churches to be open. But at Calvary Baptist Church in Dundalk Sunday, churchgoers defied the order. The governor uh, opened churches back up. Unbelievably, your county has acted unconstitutionally. And, and at Friendship Baptist Church in Baltimore City. We got a mayor saying we can only worship in our parking lots, which is ridiculous. Police monitored outside. <laughs> On Saturday, video of large crowds in the city from neighbors who say police responded in a helicopter to break it up. Stay at home order is still in effect for the city of Baltimore. Across town in Fells Point, hundreds took to the streets. Police cars start to congregate and move down the street. Causing police to shut down parts of the area to disperse people. Please continue to stay home as much as possible. And authorities are asking everyone to stay at home as much as possible. But if you do need to go out for essential business, a face mask and practicing social distancing are both strongly encouraged. Reporting live from Baltimore County, I'm Annie Rose Ramos for WJZ. Annie Rose, thank you. A number of beaches and nature trails are back open at the Assateague Island National Seashore. Most outdoor areas at Bayside Peninsula, Ferry Landing, North Beach and South Beach are now welcoming guests. Campgrounds and visitor centers will stay closed. People are still encouraged to keep their distance and avoid crowds. Nearly one and a half million people have battled the coronavirus in the country and more than 89,000 people have died. New York became the epicenter for the virus in the United States and now Senator Chuck Schumer is warning everyone about treatment scams. The senator says authorities have noticed companies claiming to have herbs, vitamins and essential oils that can prevent and treat the virus. Schumer says the Federal Trade Commission has sent dozens of letters to scammers but hasn't promised any consequences. We aren't the only one. More states started opening their economies this weekend. Jamie Yukis reports for WJZ from Los Angeles. Green flag, NASCAR is back. NASCAR drivers started their engines again Sunday in South Carolina without fans. In hard hit New Orleans, restaurants were able to reopen at 25% capacity. Universal Studio Shopping District in Orlando welcomed visitors wearing masks. And gyms in Florida will be able to open their doors Monday. But New York City beaches will remain closed over the Memorial Day weekend. And the scene you see there, that is a typical beach day when things are normal in New York City. That cannot happen anytime soon. Texas reported its highest one day total of new coronavirus cases on Saturday. More than 700 are believed to be from meatpacking plants in the Amarillo area. A Wall Street Journal analysis of nationwide COVID cases from the end of April into May finds new cases in rural areas were 30% higher than those in cities. On CBS's Face the Nation, U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services Alex Azar elaborated on vaccine development the White House has dubbed Operation Warp Speed. So what we're doing is bringing the inefficiency out of the development process to make the development side faster to get to a safe and effective vaccine 
machines. And at the same time, we're going to scale up commercial size manufacturing right. and produce hundreds of millions of doses at risk. They may not pan out, they might not prove to be safe and effective, but we'll have it so we could begin administration right away. And an effective vaccine may be what's required for a full comeback, according to Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell. This economy will recover. It may take a while. It may take a period of time it could stretch through the end of next year. We really don't know. Powell says a full recovery in 2021 assumes there won't be a second wave of coronavirus infections. Jamie Yukas, CBS News, Los Angeles. It's important to remember a coronavirus diagnosis is not a death sentence. So far, more than 268,000 Americans have recovered. About 3,000 of them are Marylanders. WJZ has everything you need to know about the coronavirus. Just go to WJZ.com, look under top stories for a list of resources. Plus, the most important links and numbers are always under quick links. A teenager in Glen Burnie is dead after a shooting last night. Anne Arundel County police say it happened at the Elvaton Town Pool near Aventura Court and Century Town Road. The victim has been identified as 18-year-old Kyreek William Anthony Devonshire. Witnesses say they saw three men in masks just before shots were fired. No arrests have been made yet. And breaking news tonight, we're learning there's been an officer-involved shooting in Anne Arundel County. Detectives say it happened on Lakeview Lane in Arnold just a few hours ago. Officers say they received a call from a man outside saying his ex-boyfriend was outside of his house. Police say the ex-boyfriend called 911 to say he had a gun. After a short chase, officers say he came towards them with a knife. That's when investigators say an officer fired several shots. Right now, there was there were several weapons found on the scene. A gun is not one of them that I know of yet. Again, this is very preliminary. As you can see behind me, it's a very active scene. Um, we still have a lot of people to interview, including our suspect in this. Police say the suspect is in the hospital but is expected to survive. We'll continue to follow that story. Tonight, Baltimore County detectives are reviewing body camera footage. After a police-involved shooting left two people injured in Essex, Sean Stryker spoke with neighbors on this developing story. Police say the incident happened around 1040 Saturday night on Skipjack Court in Essex. According to information released by the Baltimore County Police Department, Officers responded to Skipjack Court after receiving a report that there was a large gathering of people. Neighbors recall hearing um, fireworks. So all we know is that I knew that there was a group of people over there and my girls kept showing me that they were setting off fireworks. When police arrived at the scene, they say the group had already dispersed and that an armed suspect confronted the first officer to arrive. That officer fired his weapon. So we went out and looked and that's when my neighbor said that she heard about five or six gunshots maybe. Police say that two people were hit. The suspect was transported to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. The second person was also taken to a hospital, but with non-life-threatening injuries. Now, I did speak with one neighbor who didn't want to go on camera. She told me she has lived here for 10 years and has never seen anything like this before. Reporting from Essex, I'm Sean Stryker for WJZ. We are expecting to hear more from police tonight. We'll bring you the latest developments at 11. Police are investigating a suspected arson at an empty house in Aberdeen. A passerby called for help after noticing the fire on North Post Road just after midnight. Now, it took about 10 minutes to extinguish the flames, and experts estimate it caused about $50,000 worth of damage. The state fire marshal's office says it appears the fire started on the front porch and had been intentionally set. No one was hurt. Arthur is now a tropical storm in the Atlantic Ocean. It's the sixth year in a row that a named storm has formed before June 1st, which is the official start to hurricane season. A tropical storm watch is in effect for parts of the southeastern United States. Let's check in now with meteorologist Chelsea Ingram to see if Arthur will have an impact here in Maryland. Hi, Chelsea. Hey there, Rachel. Hello, everyone. So I want to take you to the latest from the National Hurricane Center on Tropical Storm Arthur. Right now, it's a very disorganized storm, and it's not very symmetric either. However, it is producing winds up to around 45 miles per hour, at least within part of the storm as it makes its way to the north-northeast at about 9. Good news as far as the cone is concerned. You always hear us talk about this feature when we are tracking tropical entities. Well, it's, we're going to see Arthur moving quickly out to sea after it makes a pass toward North Carolina. 
Carolina. As far as the impacts that we can expect here in Maryland, it will be turning very windy on Monday. The best chance for rain, however, will stay for areas well south and east. We will anticipate some rough surf down the ocean as well. We'll talk more about the moisture. And we'll